I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on algebraic identities. Now in part two, we are going to explore the product identity x plus a times x plus b. So let me rewrite this here. We learned that x plus a times x plus b is equal to x square plus sum of these two that is a plus b times x plus the product of a and b and we also learn that we can always model this in form of an area of a rectangle so if i have a rectangle whose sides are x plus a and let us say x plus b in that case well we're talking about x plus a and x plus b in that case the area splits into portions like x times x being x square right x times a means ax and here b times x and a times b so you could actually see from here that we have a square here x square which is right there correct we have a b let me use another ink okay we have a b here so that is this part a b and we have a combination of two x is common right we have a plus b so this is that combination right in the center do you see that so this expansion relates to area of a rectangle where the two factors could be treated as sides of a rectangle so i use the word factors here right so when we multiply two things they are called factors and what you get is called product now that is what happens when you multiply but there is a reverse operation which is very important and we call this as factorization. Factorization is going to be my next topic. But before that, let us really understand this particular identity which relates to product of two binomials right so what we are trying to understand here is product of two binomials perfect so i'll take up different conditions now and then explore x plus a times x plus b so first condition let us say that both a and b are equal to y in that case i could write x plus a as x plus y times x plus again y right since b is also y now this expands to what x square plus sum of these two that means y plus y plus product of these two that means y times y so clearly that gives you x square plus I mean times x 2yx plus y square right square sum times x plus their product right so what we get here is another very important identity we say x plus I mean I wrote a okay what this identity is x plus y whole square so when you multiply them you get square is equals to x square plus 2xy plus y square do you see that so we have derived another identity from the one we are working with now when i say identity it means what let me write down here when i say identity it means true for all right so true for all values that is what it means okay now 
we had one condition when both a and b were equal to y. Now what happens if a equals to b but both are equal to minus of y? In that case, I will get here x minus y times again x minus y. And when I expand it in this form, I get x square minus of, I mean, I could write plus minus y minus y. Add these two, right? Uh, plus product of minus y and minus y. Well, that gives me x square minus 2yx and here minus minus is plus y square. So that gives me another very important identity which is x minus y whole square equals to x square minus 2xy plus y square. This makes sense to you, right? Now, we'll look into another identity from here and this time what I I'm going to do is use something like sum and difference. That is to say, we will add, we'll say let A be equals to Y, but let B be minus of Y. So we are not giving the same values as we gave last two times, but they are opposite values. In that case, we'll have X plus A, X plus A becomes Y times x minus y because b is minus y. Now in this case what do I get? When I expand using this product I get x plus y minus y times x plus y times minus y. Now that gives me x square plus 0x. Zero, 0? Yeah. y minus y is 0. And this becomes negative y square. Okay. So that means uh, what do we get finally? The formula which we derive here is x plus y times x minus y is equal to difference of squares. Now this is another extremely important identity. So what you get this time is that the product of sum and difference is difference of squares. And earlier we found that x minus y whole square is x square minus 2xy plus y square. On the other hand, if we are adding the 2 and then finding the square, we get plus 2xy in the center. So from this particular identity, we get these identities also, right? So 2, 3 and 4. This was starting with 1. So these four identities are the basic algebraic identities which will help us to expand algebraic expressions and also to contract and that process is called factorization. Perfect. So now we'll take a few examples to practice how to expand and in the next video we'll talk about factoring. I hope up to here there is no problem. So now let's look into some examples and understand how to expand using these four identities. So here are five questions for you to practice. You can pause the video, copy these questions, answer them and then look into my suggestions. Now I'll begin with writing the formula as such which is x plus a times x plus b and this could be written as x square plus sum of a and b right times x plus product of a and b right and we also learned few special cases where a could be equal to b or b equal to a so in that case we get some more identities let me rewrite those right at the bottom of this sheet so this becomes our basic identity and then we learned that x plus y whole square is equal to x square plus 2 times xy plus y square and we also learned that x minus y whole square is equal to x square minus 2xy plus y square and also if we have x plus y times x minus y what is that equal to well this is equal to x square minus y square so these are the four different identities 
which you can also refer to as formulas, right? So they are as good as any formula. Use them to write down these answers quickly, right? So that's the idea. So let's begin. x plus 1 times x plus 3 should give us x square plus some of these two, that is to say 1 plus 3 times x plus product of these two, that is 1 times 3. And so what you get is x square plus 4x plus 3, correct? So I'm writing it in three steps so that it's absolutely clear how and why we are getting that result. Now when we have minus here, so basically we'll have x square and when we are adding, these two numbers this time are plus 2 and minus 3. So just add them as such and when you multiply, then also multiply them as such. So what do you get? You get x square and 2 times 2 minus 3 is minus 1. So you get minus x this time, okay? And here also you get a negative sign with 6, 3 times 2. Does it make sense to you? So it is not necessary that you'll get both plus, right? You could get negative if the numbers are negative. Now here we are going to directly apply the formula, which is x square plus 2xy plus y square. So I'm missing the middle part and straight away writing the final answer, which is x square plus 2 times 3 is 6, 6x, six plus 3 square, which is 9. Does make sense to you? But you could actually write in between steps and then conclude. Now here again, we have something like this, but fractions involved. So since there are fractions, let me be safe. So I'm going to add 2 to half, writing x, and then I'm going to multiply half with 2 to get my result which is x square plus 2 and a half, which is 2 times 2, 4 plus 1, 5, over 2x. And when you multiply this, you get just number 1. In this case, we have square terms involved. So square of square will be x to the power of 4, but x is p this time. So p to the power of 4, right? And in between, we have to add 1 over 3, and then we have to add minus 1 over 3, but we'll write p square, not just p. And then we have to multiply these two, which is 1 over 3 and minus 1 over 3. You will recall that this is very similar, rather than exactly same, as our fourth identity, right? Product of some and difference. And you get the result as expected, which is square of the first term, which is p to the power of 4, square of square, minus square of 1 over 3, which is 1 over 9. Do you see that? And you can check that it is true. Now, this is true for all values of x. So we say x belongs to real numbers. In that case, and all of the numbers are also real numbers. In that case, it is always true. Now, some of you who will be doing complex numbers, so when x belongs to complex numbers, even then, these properties are true. So they are actually true for all set of numbers. Perfect. But I hope you have learned and also registered and remembered that these four identities are extremely important, worth remembering, and they will help you to move forward uh, and solve many questions relating to algebra. I hope you enjoyed this journey of learning with me. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, share my videos with your friends, subscribe to them. And if you really like them, put some likes, post questions. That is going to help us to address exactly what you need. I hope that helps. Thanks and all the best.